Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's Tuesday, the 10th of December, the second scoop of the week. My name is Graham Day, and this gentleman next to me is a is a man that looks much older than he did last <laughs> week. You know, he doesn't look the same. It was his birthday yesterday, that's what I'm getting. How you doing, Ben? Good, man. Good, 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 good. Another I'm, year older now. How does it feel? Do you feel... Do you feel slower and more decrepit than you did? We're not going to go into how I currently feel, um, <laughs> especially live on the air, but yeah, uh, I'm feeling great, <laughs> apart from this cold sore that's coming through. Uh, yeah, me and Bib clearly have been kissing because I've had a cold sore <laughs> since last week, and now he has one. Babe, sorry, just uh, just accept it, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, though, is, is let you talk about your cold sore while I just post my uh, tweet about the show. Okay, yeah, no worries. Uh, so, yeah, my cold sore, usually I start to get some kind of cold sore when I'm uh, when I'm a bit run down, when I'm feeling a bit ill or whatever. But, you know, I'm, I'm ill and I'm still aged, you know what I mean? That's that's trooper material, mate. It's dedication. Tweet gone trooper out. Material. There we go. There we go. Expert padding there, I like to do. <laughs> Uh, so we are Ice Cream Applause, obviously Graham and Bib, but we are Ice Cream and this is The Scoop, our daily fix of games and history. A bit my lip then. <laughs> it's not even my cold, sorry, one. It's all about the lips on the show today. So yes, we bring you the daily fix of the games industry news. And there is a lot to talk Oof. about at the moment. I literally have all of the tabs open right now. Yeah, absolutely. So we bring you... The news from the games industry and beyond every single weekday, 10 a.m. UK time on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. If you are watching live, feel free to get involved in the chat. We interact with you guys. We take your opinions. We give you our opinions. We get opinions on opinions. And there's a few opinions. So feel <laughs> free to get involved. Uh, obviously, you guys get the opportunity to get involved and be a part of the scoop each and every weekday, 10 a.m. live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. We then turn that into a standalone on-demand podcast that we put on YouTube around an hour or so after the show has finished. Those guys get it on demand, but they don't get the ability to interact like you do live on Twitch, so make sure you get involved for everyone else. You've got, you've got a job to do. Um, and then a little bit later on in the day, we turn the podcast into an audio version uh, on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play, four places where we get right in your skull. <laughs> uh, I'm talking if, if you're wearing headphones, you know, you may, you may be listening to it in some sort of grandeur setup in your living room with like... Maybe you will. Or, or you know Sonos. What? Exactly, exactly. Uh, hashtag ad. Hashtag not ad. Hashtag I wish. Could be ad. I mean, if you want to. Whatever. Hashtag well more expensive than I can afford. I wouldn't mind having a Sonos, though. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, Mark and Lee, when I first started here, they got a mate at Sonos that, that needed someone to do some, like, product testing. So they basically got, like, Sonos stuff, like, set up for free. I was like, fucking git. It's just like, it's just like one... Is it like having an Alexa in your front room and then, like, you've got all the speakers all around your house, so you're like, Sonos, play... Weezer in the front room and he goes boom and then you're like oh I'm going to go and do some cooking now so I, I, I think I was activated now uh, I know that it used yeah, to be app controlled because um, this is going back eight years ago when I the last time I fully looked into it um, and the guy I used to work with called Max used to have full Sonos uh, speakers and different app and it's kind of like using the uh, what I do with my Echo stuff now I can play music in every room in just certain rooms yeah. or whatever um, but he used to control that all on his app but that was before we had the likes of Google Home and Alexas and things like that so it doesn't actually think about it it wouldn't surprise me that if it is voice activated but 179 quid not bad that's just for one I'll just get a 35 quid Echo Dot. Get one <laughs> all in around the room. room. <laughs> uh, hello, says number one pirate, using his uh, sprinkles there to make his own custom black and white version of the emote. GG, GG. Feel free to check out the uh, sprinkles, by the way. They're kind of down in that direction in the bottom corner. That's the, uh, the our channel points we've rebranded as sprinkles. Make sure you check it out. Uh, Griff96 says, here we go. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Pirate morning. dropping the horse as well with a let's go. And uh, Jess with three hellos. And what's that? Is that a Nyan deer? It's like a reindeer, but Nyan cat version. Ah, mm. ah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, me and uh, Jim will fix it over here. <laughs> I'll have you know, that is absolute nonsense. To the scoop. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, do you know what I mean? I don't know. I think these up straight into the nonce jokes. <laughs> it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> do 
you can tell it's the end of the year where we just think, do you know what, fuck this shit, I'm done. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going full uh, Last of Us cosplay. I've got my uh, my Joel shirt on and boots because you can't even see boots. boots. So yeah, there we go. Uh, oh no, just no, <laughs> says Pirate in the chat. Exactly, exactly. Anyway, let's jump in before we get ourselves off the air covering dodgy stuff in dodgy ways. Uh, right, I need to figure out this stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, it's the one way I made an actual... There's two two puns today, funny guy. <laughs> Jumping in! First news story of the day, and this is from the PlayStation blog. You will have probably seen some world-class punnery going on on the uh, Ice Cream Uploads Twitter account. That's at Ice Cream Uploads, where we post all, all of our tweets, by the way. Uh, and uh, this is Bibby saying, hashtag Minecraft is going to make your bedrock. <laughs> Which relates to this. Minecraft bedrock version is coming to PS4. Uh, which, I mean, I kind of have mixed opinions on this. I'm thinking, finally. But I also think, you know what, GG, Microsoft, because they are Minecraft, they can do whatever they want. But... Uh, Minecraft have always uh, I've always been yeah we should we should have it doesn't matter where you where you want to play it everyone should be able to play mm. and that's what it is removing the boundaries and stuff like that uh, uh, and I, and then I'm thinking yeah but you've just bought Minecraft so that Sony couldn't use it you absolute whoppers but the fact that they've rolled it out is, is pretty good so yeah okay mm. jumping into the uh, article um, <clears throat> written by Kelsey Howard for the PlayStation blog this says uh, PlayStation blog <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation blog as well uh, uh, Bedrock is coming to PlayStation Four tomorrow. Kelsey, you gasping horror, you've given away the whole article in the first sentence. Don't worry, beloved reader of PlayStation blog, there is always more. So how is this different from the version of Minecraft I can already play on my PS4? Well, the difference is that Bedrock uh, version of Minecraft is the unified version of the game that offers the same experience across all consoles. All that glorious unified code means that you'll be able to play the same game as your pals on Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, Windows 10, and mobile, asterisk. Uh, Crossplay regards other platforms of Minecraft to be an update 1.14, including PS4 systems. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so yes, that means you get crossplay between those different consoles. Not just that, PS4 players now also have access to the Minecraft Marketplace, a source for worlds, skins, mini games, and mashup packs. So you're going to have uh, not just a better Minecraft experience than ever before, but more Minecraft than ever. What if I already own Minecraft on PS4? Like I do. Uh, do I need to buy the game again to get the Bedrock version? Uh, short answer, no. Uh, the next time you start Minecraft, the new update will install automatically and free of charge. This update will never expire, and all game purchases after today for PS4 uh, will always be for this new version. Uh, we call this update Busy Bees, or 1.14, and it'll be arriving on PS4 tomorrow at 8 a.m. PST. Hope to see you in the ov overworld soon. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> so that's, yeah. Uh, my initial thoughts were, uh, are just around Xbox in general, the... the the kind of making the moral stance of we shouldn't have any console exclusive, we shouldn't have any timed exclusive stuff because, you know, it's bad for the players and, and I completely agree with the sentiment behind it. But I'm always dubious thinking, yeah, but you've done that sort of stuff before. You guys had, what, the Tomb Raider exclusive for a year before I could Crash play it on the PlayStation. So, well, they've got Gears of War. They've literally just brought out Gears of War and that's an exclusive. That ain't coming out on PlayStation, well, it never has done. The difference difference with Gears, as Graham throws his coffee all over the table, is Gears is a, is a first party product, mm. so I can, I can see that. But like buying things like uh, Square Enix's Tomb Raider and saying, we want it before PlayStation gets it and we want it only us for a year, that's yeah. a bit different then. However, that was a while ago and, and maybe they've changed their tack since then. So, but even still, I've always been dubious as it's easy to go... Oh, everyone should have everything. We want everyone to be... It's all about the games, not about our profit margin. Mm -hmm. It's about the best experience for us as all. Uh, and then I'm thinking, yeah, but you've just bought off uh, uh, Mojang, Mahjong. Mahjong's the card game. Mojang, that's the yeah. one. Uh, Mojang. Uh, you've just bought that uh, from Notch so that you can own Minecraft, so that you can fully utilise it for PC and then craft it for the Xbox while letting the PS4 version turn into a big pile of poop. And I was thinking, is that... But the fact that they've then gone... Uh, ahead with actually, do you know what? We'll, we'll we'll stick with our word and and we will roll out Minecraft the Bedrock update so that PS4 players can have the same experience that Xbox players. I do have Minecraft. I don't play it. Uh, I got it for Daddy Daughter fun times. Me and Chloe. We've done some Minecraft streams in the past, and um, it just was stale. It didn't really go anywhere. Um, whereas Xbox players are like, yeah, look at all the things. Do you not think they've started to roll this out because they know? That was the, the the stats got released for the most played games this year. 
and I think this all ended up overtaking Fortnite, did it? Yeah, it was. It was, um, and and game sales of all time as well. It's mm. like third or second or or is it first? No, I can't remember. GTA thinks first, yeah. didn't it? Um, but yeah. I do think there is some of that in it in terms of you know, everyone should play everything but we'll just buy this business and make it all for our own oh what Microsoft, uh, Minecraft's had a massive resurgence on YouTube and everything yes let's get it out of the PlayStation <laughs> everyone for everything again um, uh, so none of the Flintstones are in it then you know what oh. that's exactly what I thought I thought it was like uh, you know they do the timed game mode thing so like they had the Stormtroopers in Fortnite I thought it was going to be like oh there's, is there a new Flintstones film coming out that I'd not seen or whatever but yeah, it's weird that they, why they call it Bedrock. It seems a bit because Bedrock is the name, the geographical name for the uh, underlying hard surface of, of the Earth. So you've got the surface, but then you've got Bedrock, and that's the... well, you learn every day. Well, my geography A level finally gets some <laughs> so This is where someone jumps in and goes, "Actually, no, it's yeah, not. Yeah. I think you'll find it's a blah, 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 blah. Let's get the fuck out of here." Yeah. By the way, if you are a geography uh, graduate, then feel free to. You don't have to go. You can stay. You can mm. stay. Just, just have to sub. That's all I'm saying. Just uh, or, or if you want to punt. Oh my god. Oh. Rock puns. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Uh, before we get stoned by the audience. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice. It's good. Uh, but I think that the more interesting thing is is the timing. Um, this is clearly a way for Microsoft to get some. PS4 content into the state of play, which is almost kind of bizarre. I mean, uh, might not come out. Maybe the fact that it's out now means that it might not go into state of play. But I imagine that state of play would be seeing this as yeah, it might be on by Microsoft, but this kind of needs to be included in state of play. And that is today. Is it? Is it? It's not 10 a.m. No, no. That's it's... what I'm trying to figure out now. Ah, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. So 2 p.m. this afternoon, uh, PlayStation have their state of play, uh, which if if you've never seen it before. Um, it's essentially like a 25, 30 minute video, um, like like a TV-ish sort of program where they kind of give you slides and teasers and trailers of, of new games, new releases, things that are out now, new DLC coming, new games coming in the future. Um, so this could be it. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that this could be this could be in it. Should I say this this Minecraft Bedrock update? I keep looking there, and you're all. Like, <laughs> So I'm looking in that camera, looking at you, looking in that camera. <laughs> it's usually you that does it. I was looking here all along. It's fine. So, oh god. So, yeah, Minecraft Bedrock. I envisage being in state of play, uh, potentially in the Game Awards, maybe because it's. I mean, it's so big, and the Game Awards will have all obviously. Hideo Kojima is going to walk out on the stage. Uh, Jeff Keighley is going to do some piece to camera with his microphone and how this guy. Went from being an indie startup in a room with just two chairs uh, to making the game of the year, and is it, I, I, I'm proud to call him a close friend of mine. Calling it, if it, I mean, get get the Jeff Keighley bingo on the go. It's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, one thing they don't do very well, in my experience, maybe maybe you could say I'm wrong if if you've got any evidence of that, is that they don't really push the family side of it very well. So having Minecraft in it, that's just a, oh, well, let's throw that out. I mean, it's not made by Hideo Kojima, so we're not really bothered, but but it's fine. Well, let's, let's do that. So, yeah, we could see that there, but I think it'd be, it, it, it's probably more of a shoe in for having a 30-second segment within the state of play. Yeah, well, you have to pay. Is it, State of play is definitely a place that they show off new games and things like that but it's also a very nice way for people to advertise their games whether or not it's a long standing game or a games of service we would guarantee we're not going to see any anthem there um, but yeah it's it's just an advertising space so if the game's worthy and is the number one game in the in the world at the moment it's throwing a, f a few f few grand at state of play to advertise this new update yeah, that's, that's, doesn't seem out of the that's question that's point that actually I've, I've never I, mean, I know the game awards you have to pay for placement um, uh, it, that probably won't be the case with everything so you will get um, depending on your title and the size of it and, and whatever it'll probably be a case of let's say The Last of Us not that that's going to be there but let's say The Last of Us want to do, do a big trailer mm -hmm. reveal I reckon if they had a world premiere yeah. sort of exclusive thing then uh, the people at the Game Awards would be like okay well let's scratch the fees we will include it um, as like our headline piece of content uh, if you give us the exclusive then we will uh, run it for free. If not, then you want your trailer featured in, then it's going to cost you 20 grand. Yeah. Because obviously they need to pay for 
uh, everything around it, mm-hmm. all the market and the staffs, uh, the staffs, the setup, the the staff, the, uh, the tech and everything. Um, whereas state of play, I suppose, I suppose it probably is a marketing thing. I'm just thinking with it being so kind of removed from that that spectacle mm-hmm. showpiece thing. Is it a case of Sony's going actually? We just want people to know how relevant PlayStation is. Even though we're not doing big stage shows, and even though these, we're not releasing The Last of Us right now and, and everything, we want you to know that there is this many games coming, these indie titles coming. So I wonder if if they do charge for that or where, whether they handpick uh, people to be included, people being uh, a, a lazy way of saying devs yeah. in their titles and so on. I think it's, I think it's each... Each their own kind of thing. So depending on the reputation of the game, depending on the reputation of the developer, depending depending on how many people you think that this game is going to appear. Because this update, if this was to go into the state of play, it would literally need to be a thirty seconds to a minute advert. Everyone knows what Minecraft is. Everyone knows what you're getting from it. However, this is the biggest update that Minecraft has probably ever had because it's going to bring them in line with the rest of the consoles, i.e. Uh, the uh, Xbox One and the PC, which you said are the premium versions to play Minecraft. So if they want people to come back and play Minecraft on their console, potentially get it the kids for Christmas again if they've lost the disc or whatever, it's um, they might not even have to pay for it. And I'm going to, uh, yeah, a minute also, just to say, new worlds, new... What, I, 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 I haven't got a dog in the Minecraft race. I have absolutely no <laughs> idea what, I, what the hell goes on inside. I know you have blocks, you build worlds, you defeat things at night. I have no idea what. Um, but yeah, if it's if this is severely lacking behind the rest of the consoles, then it's easily going to be the biggest 30 seconds of marketing that Minecraft are going to have on the PlayStation probably ever. Yeah, exactly. Particularly that mentioned it before Christmas. 12.99 it costs to get the PS4 edition of Minecraft at the moment. I think I got it like 7.99. Um the price does drop. I mean 12.99 is pretty cheap enough anyway, uh, especially if it's something like you're going to spend a few hours with your kids over Christmas or not even with your kids. <clears throat> you might just think actually I'm 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 a fan of Lego and digital Lego that's pretty much what Minecraft is. I was good, let's go that way. Um so even even my mate Carl actually, I don't know if he's in the chat if he is. Good morning, Carl. Um, he's messaged me this morning saying uh, big Minecraft update, Bedrock's uh, finally coming. So he's he's going to create new worlds and new servers yeah. and so on. He put, he plays a lot of it on his own. Um, so yeah, it's it's that's not even him doing it for kids. It's just like he's yeah into the the building, the whole yeah. uh, construction thing. I think he plays survival mode, whereas I just do like the creative. Like yeah. I haven't got my imagination isn't good enough to be able to create something in game like I haven't got the time like my brother created a football stadium in his when he played it and he's when did he stop playing it probably two or three years ago or something but he was like come and have a look at this a fully fledged football stadium in the middle of nowhere that he'd built out oh, I, uh, I haven't got the brain for that I I, um, I have the brain for it but I don't have the patience with my own OCD in terms of like you'll go I'll just have, a, have, have 20 minutes playing it Um I'll be there. I'm just gonna hit yeah, just just actually, I'm just gonna tweak this bit. Just yeah. gonna and then like I'll be just sat there like like dirty grey vest beard down there. Just, just, <laughs> me, me and my mate Martin uh, usually comes back, he's a soldier, he comes back uh, he comes back home usually around Christmas and he'll come around to my house. We'll have a, a weekend where we'll just have one night, we'll just have some beers, play some modern warfare or, or battlefield mm. or Titanfall or whatever games. And we just kinda got it was like Two o'clock in the morning, we'd had a few beers and was like, I can't be bothered. We're, we're both crap at Modern Warfare now. We've got to that point where beer is impacting on everything, so let's, just, <laughs> let's give up. Let's play something else. And I had Minecraft on the dashboard because I've been playing with Chloe and he's like, Chloe and he's like, let's let's go. Do you know what? We'll go into a world. You go to one bit. I'll go to the next bit. We'll just have like twenty minutes or whatever to build something, mm. and then we'll look at each other's things. And he'd built this big block kind of thing, and it was all kind of like, oh, that's that's nice and functional. I'd like. Like hollowed out a mountain, made like steps. I had an indoor waterfall. <laughs> I had beds. I had artwork and everything. It was class. I think I showed it off on stream when me and Chloe last played. But yeah, I I then start like I, I go into the fine detail. Me and Chloe when she we did a Minecraft stream maybe a year or so ago, uh, and we built like a tennis court, uh, like nets across mm. it and everything, and then got snowballs in our hands so it looked like we were actually hitting <laughs> the tennis balls. Back. I I just haven't got the imagination for it at all. Um, however, this did you see this yesterday? Uh, I, yeah, I, I saw you sent me the tweet through. I looked at the tweet, but then just didn't look at anything around it. So, do you know, I'll, I'll bring that up on screen, seeing as we're talking about, just so people know what we're talking about. Uh, uh, F11. Oh, yeah. boom. Oh. 
So this is what we're talking about. This tweet here from Spawn Wave Media, at Spawn mm. Wave Media, which is Spawn Wave. Uh, that rumor about Kojima and Konami working together again sounds too crazy to be true. Dot, 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 mm -hmm. dot, dot. Now, we featured Spawn Wave stuff a few times, as well as other people have featured his stuff in their articles when we talked about it. Now, I've been subscribed to Spawn Wave for about two years. His tech breakdowns and stuff like that are phenomenal. He knows his stuff around a lot of things, and he tends to not report stuff unless he thinks it's got a kind of traction behind it. Now, I have absolutely no idea what they could be working on if anything now i don't think it's going to be anything like pt why would why i mean kojima said that he what he started watching horror things again but i've got a feeling that he's going to want to take that direction on his own um but i was uh who was speaking to last night about this i've uh yeah it was mark actually uh and he said he thinks that kojima may be going back to Konami to give them an idea of how to use the Fox engine like because he's obviously left and I don't know whether or not he ended up taking the team that was using the Fox engine for Metal Gear Solid or what but he might be going back as a what do you call it consultant consultant doing some consultancy for Konami Interesting. for the Metal Gear engine so I mean, whether or not a new Metal Gear game is potentially going to get made or it could be a completely different project I don't know but did they use the Fox engine in PT uh, yes PT, uh, well, I say yes. I'm saying yes on a th a th an assumption. Uh, I don't actually know that. Um, I would assume so because you go back to 2014, 2015, 2016, that sort of time, mm. um, Fox Engine had just been, uh, was massively promoted. It was used in Ground Zeroes, it was used in the Phantom Pain, it was used in the PES series. Yeah, well, that, uh, that's what made me think it could have potentially been in PT because obviously not only did they use it in Metal Gear, used it in Pez as well and if he is very familiar with the engine it makes sense for him to be able to use it rather than using the Unreal Engine or something like it's that. interesting though because um, uh, like to go in as that level of consulting that does make sense but at the same time there are, there is a team that has been developing on the Fox engine for years now. The Pez team have been developing since what was it 20... 14 was yeah. the first Fox Engine one uh, and so we've had five years uh, six years of Fox Engine development there so they should you'd think have a lot of knowledge internally already um, but not only that Kojima has left has was it five years ago now four years ago whenever all that stuff happened he's done a world tour he's played with all of the engines mm -hmm. and he's using Gorilla's engine in the game so all these developers will be used to a different engine by now so would he would he be like the best person to speak to in terms of that? I know that they, they're saying that his team did develop the Fox engine. Yeah, uh, well, it's not only that though. Like the Pez, uh, the, the using the Fox engine on Pez is a completely different job than using the Fox engine on the likes of Metal Gear Solid or PT. Everything moves a little bit differently in the the way yeah, that they one use. One of them's the, based on a predefined space mm. and then physics and ball movement and, and inertia and speed and uh, physicality, whereas another one is based around portraying and creating a whole world yeah. all of the triggers and things and... like that yeah so yeah I, i'm very interested to see now i i and and spawn wave is definitely a person i never usually take with a pinch of salt when he posts something i just think shit he's gonna make a video on that soon so i'm waiting for his video to come out and to see what he says it's funny because i i uh just in the interest of coverage oh bollocks uh <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I um, just searched for the words Kojima and Konami on Twitter uh, just to see what the general consensus is. Uh, and it's amazing how quickly something like this um, with no evidence. Let, let's face it, like Spawnwave is credible in, uh, in terms of things that he's done before, but obviously a lot of it still is rumour. Mm -hmm. But there is no evidence no concrete evidence apart from it's one of those things where somebody says something so somebody references somebody yeah. else so somebody references somebody else and then you when you've got three points of reference it's like oh that's it i've got three three references it's no they're all referencing the mm. one thing but now you feel like you've got loads uh and like so it's kind of spiraled into it but it's amazing how quickly people like just looking at the tweets so the reason i went bollocks then is because i scrolled down on twitter and refreshed everything and i had a few <laughs> I, I had a few tweets there um and it was basically uh going from the as if Kojima would go back to work with Konami after all that and then uh, talking about uh, Kojima didn't leave he was fired blah 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 and it, but it's, it's amazing how contrasting people's opinions are on it uh, a lot of people um, 
are instantly going, well, he will never go back. Some people, I mean, as you can see that one on screen, uh, uh, if enough, uh, uh, or is it with enough money or for enough money, everything yeah. is possible, it's too far away for me. So, uh, but yeah, basically saying that money makes the world go around, which is kind of true, but at the same time, Hideo Kojima doesn't necessarily need money. Um, and I'd, for someone that's just made a game that was so creative uh, in Death Stranding, mm -hmm. I don't think he'd go back for money. So whilst that... For enough money, anything can happen. But I don't think it would be about the money. It'd be about the message, about the creativity, Ooh. if that was going to happen. Um, but my my personal opinion is, I, I can't see it. Yeah. Not well, this guy says Silent Hill Reborn. Oh, that's the name. That's the title. If there was going to be made, some new Silent Hill games made and he was going to be leading it, that is definitely the, game, <laughs> the name that they need to run with. Welcome to Clickbait Uploads. <laughs> yeah. why, didn't, why didn't we start with that? It was absolutely not going to happen. That's what we should have started with. Uh, uh, this guy's written a poem. Ha ha ha! No chance of this happening. I say that with much insight, says Asim Tanvir. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> Hello, Asim. by the way. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I can't see it happening. It would be nice to see uh, that, but just, just imagine the world of games journalism how 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 do they react to this because obviously it's it's fashionable to hate on konami and no doubt uh all of konami social channels are going to get a certain hashtag mm -hmm. with an f at the beginning of it uh, and konami at the end of it tomorrow uh, not tomorrow thursday when the game awards has come uh, been and gone there'll be a lot of that again but imagine if kojima did go back and did work on uh silent hills reborn or um whatever it was going to be how would the games industry react to that and it's like okay can we can we still say these guys are dicks i mean because <laughs> because they, they annoyed our friend but he's now working with them mm. so he's forgiven them are we allowed to and so it's just kind of like <sighs> even mostly still. though it's just it, that just comes from stanzos on it like it's super fanboys yeah. kind of thing so you usually again you take them guys with a pinch of salt anyway but not really asked about a new metal gear game but just give me a new silent hill game <laughs> <laughs> just give me one of them with him at the helm and We'll be a very happy bit, but we're getting Resident Evil 3 next year. Fingers do you know crossed. what? Do you know what? We're not getting Re Resident Evil 3 next year. Why, like? The, the reason it's put on the PSN store is because they're going to do a they're going to do a Kojima with PT. <laughs> Bam! It's out now. Uh, they're not. That's absolutely 100 not going to happen. I'd be well surprised if it did. Um, but yeah, KJP will make a great horror game next, though. Pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. His, his mentalist mind will go to a very dark place again to be able to create it, and that essentially, I want his mind in a, in a, in a horror game. We've talked about it loads on the show, anyway, and that would for me would be the pin. I love Resident Evil, absolutely love it, but it's a zombie game. We've got a million and one of those. We've had a reimagined in this year, which was perfect, but the psychological horror will always fuck people up, yeah, and that is what I want. Day. Psych horror is is it's that getting in your mind it's mm -hmm. not look at these things that's scary yeah. more scary things it's like do you know what? is there something scary there are you going to see it are you not going to see it mm -hmm. what if you don't see it but it sees you what the yeah ah! that's the uh, that's the Resident Evil thing in a nutshell though like you'll have your shotgun like on the very old ones with the tank controls the, the, the fright would be you can see the zombie coming up to you you've got a shotgun the only way to set the head off is by aiming at the head if you miss that shot he's going to bite you whereas this when you walk through a door yeah, absolutely. The, the the room could look perfectly normal, but then shit's going to happen around it, yeah, and that's the worst part about it's it. It's like the most complex interact uh, in, interactory <laughs> interactable uh, thing that you did in PT uh, was open a door yeah. or, or walk to a wall as letters and numbers changed, and that that was about it. Or listen to the phone call yeah. as it comes on the radio. Or the sorry. radio. Yeah. That, that guy whose voice was kind of like this. Mm. The husband came home and he he narrated movies all day every day. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, 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 pirate. The, the uh, chat's going mad today. That's what well, that's what Mr. Tanvir does. He he comes in and everyone starts. Like, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> uh, at some point, though, they will for sure. Kojima has a hard on for her, though. Sorry for the mental image. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's kind of teased at that, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. With the, uh, I mean, we covered it. Was it last week or so? Yeah, um, it's when they found he rented a film without the sleeve. He only rented the disc because yeah. he said it was too scary or something what like that. What was it called? Now was it the eye? The or eye. Yeah. yeah, we we did cover it. Um, but yeah, I mean, Kojima working with Konami. I can't see it. I mean, I'm, I'm happy enough to talk about it all day, every day, because it's just one of those like things where there's a bajillion and one impressions. Uh, so we've got distracted images off the side of the screen. Uh, specialist people from the ice cream team. Uh, 
Do you know what? Turn the camera around. <laughs> yeah. Don't stop doing that then. Never mind. Anyway, um, so yeah. <laughs> Literally, someone has just mooned through the window <laughs> in the Ice Cream Upload Studios. Uh, oh, crack attack. So there we go, cracking me up. <laughs> anyway, the cheek of it. Anyway, back to action. Uh, Kojima, not going to happen. Would like to see it. Um, uh, Jess says that uh, it's probably chances are he's gonna, Kojima's probably going to make a film out of it, which I agree. I feel, would his mind be able to work in a two and a half hour film? Is uh, that enough time to let his brain run free? I think, do you know, I genuinely think he, he'd probably be, look, we're probably looking at a three hour film. Oh, uh, minimum. I, th I think he could work really well with films. And we've seen it with like Metal Gear, solid cutscenes and stuff like that. Yeah, but they're like 45 minutes long. Yeah, but <laughs> I think there he's kind of building longer narratives and trying to like develop characters and stuff because he doesn't get the time to do that in the gameplay. And so I think if he was hit with the restrictions of you've got two to three hours. He would make it. I think any film publisher would be okay. Well, you can do it, but but we're going to edit it. Uh, which he would he would then have to say, okay, well, I want to be involved because I don't want all the good bits ending mm -hmm. up on the clipping room floor. This is my story. And but yeah, when it comes to that, I think he would have more guidance in terms of he would have so many crazy ideas and uh, exceptional ideas. But then they'd go, okay, well, you're going to have to lose these because you can't have five main narratives in a two-hour. Yeah, uh, well, if that's the case, then what do you think would be better suited? A 10-hour series or three three-hour films? Uh, I think... As a trilogy. I mean, it, it, either or. They could both work. I mean, a 10-hour series definitely works uh, in terms of what we've seen from... I mean, I, we talk, spoke, spoke about American Horror Story yesterday. Started, mm. started uh, Asylum. Yeah. Asylum, yeah. Two or three episodes in already. Yeah, boy. Um, so... Um, making it into chapters that that um, kind of parting it up I think that works for uh, horror three hours of uh, psych horror can be I mean the thing with horror is by definition it's stressful mm. three hours of it can be a bit tiresome I don't think I've ever seen a horror film longer than an hour and a half uh, yeah, you, it's usually for that sort of reason. Mm. Your audience gets uncomfortable, and weirded out, and thinks, "Do you know what? I just want a, I want a brew. I want, I want, I want some Terry's chocolate orange sensations with exploding popping candy, and because it's December, and I can do this shit, and you can't judge me." <laughs> Saying that though, big fan of the Saw franchise, and they're making a ninth one. Chris Rock directing it. That's going to be Chris insane. Rock. Chris Rock. Have you not seen the cast for it, mate? No. Oh, I, I, I did, I did, show I did see the see. A mention of it on my social media the other day, but I have kind of a love hate relationship with Saw. The first one is one of my like that twist. Didn't see it coming. Usually, I'm quite good at reading what's happening in a film, um, and I did not see uh, the twist at the end of Saw. But then I've seen Saw one, two, three, four, five, or whatever. By the time we got to five, I was just like, it's just it's just see how fast you can run through this wall of knives, and it's like, why just because? And, and yeah. Samuel Jones is going to be in it. Samuel Jackson. And Samuel Jones. Samuel Jones. <laughs> Samuel Jackson, uh, Marisol Nichols, uh, Chris Rock, he's directing it, I'm going to be starring in it as well. It's, uh, I, I have no idea where they're going to take the storyline for this, because uh, the last one, if I remember rightly, Everything came, everything came back to normal. Dr. Gordon was his accomplice at all uh, all of the time. Um, uh, it was nice a jigsaw spoilers there. Actually. Nice spoilers there. Not seen right. that. Have you not? <laughs> no. Oh, well. Like I said, I've seen enough time. It's been one, three two, years. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, have you seen Jigsaw? No. That was a prequel. Because it, it, was, it was just all crap. So. Right. Well, Jigsaw was amazing. You need to watch that one. Don't That's be. a prequel to everything. So. Spoilers, baby thinks everything's amazing, it's fine. It is, I, I do. Um, if you need a hype man, I am the hype man. <laughs> Speaking of hype, let's jump back into things. So we've spoken about Minecraft uh, coming to PS4. Probably going to see it featured in State of Play today. Uh, but then four hours after State of Play, we're going to jump into this. Um, so pretty tasty day for news uh, in terms of games industry. So we will have, we've got uh, Minecraft Bedrock hitting uh, live servers today. State of play at 2pm uh, this afternoon UK time and then at 6pm tonight uh, I believe, yep 10am PST so 6pm uh, UK time tonight uh, there will be Nintendo's Indie World presentation. Mm -hmm. and this article uh, looks over that, it's from VG247 written by Emily Gear and she says, tune in tomorrow 
Nintendo will be live streaming an Indie World Direct on December 10th. It was announced today over Twitter. Indie World presentation will go live tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. PST, highlighting some of the smaller creative titles coming to the Switch platform. Uh, so I'm just going to read out the tweet that's embedded in the article now, written from uh, Nintendo of Europe, at Nintendo Europe on Twitter. Uh, tune in tomorrow, 10 slash 12 at 7pm CET for a new Indie World Showcase live stream featuring roughly 20 minutes of information on some upcoming indie games for Nintendo Switch. And then it links through to where you can watch it within the tweet. So the upcoming uh, event will feature 20 minutes worth of information on um, upcoming indie games coming to the Nintendo Switch. We'll be watching along with you and we will be updating you with all the news. So a very, very brief article, not much to go on there. When, when the only information you've got is mm -hmm. that there's 20 minutes of content coming, um, then, yeah, you can't really say much. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Ron Seal does exactly what it, it says on the tin in terms of the article there, but but pretty tasty day. I mean, out of nowhere, yesterday, Nintendo went, oh, state of play tomorrow. Should we kind of like hold mm -hmm. off our messaging until... Ah, fuck it, let's just go! <laughs> Four hours later. In the world. <laughs> so this is at 6 p.m. today. State of play at two o'clock today. It's one hell of a day, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this one, admittedly, from my stereotypical standpoint, um, uh, indie Doesn't titles. Like whistle. In, yeah, indie titles generally. I am, I am such a, uh, a a wet lettuce when it comes to content in terms of I like AAA, big, loud, bombastic stuff. Mm. Um, so yeah, that kind of stuff usually works for me. Indie stuff, not so much. But that said. When I find an indie title that resonates with me, mm -hmm. yeah, then it, then it's a different thing. So I mean, um, you can't really call Overcooked indie because uh, I mean, it's, it's Team Seventeen class as an indie developer. Uh, well, we'll just say it is. Mm. Uh, so so um, Overcooked is is Tearaway. Uh, I can't imagine. The Tearaway was first party, wasn't it? Yeah, it was made by what's it called? The, the one that makes it's owned by Sony and makes Big Little Planet and stuff. I can't remember. Anyway, um, so but the game is kind of almost Indian in terms of concept, but then you get things like Limbo and actually Asim's in the chat, Roke, um, who uh, United Ar uh, United Artists uh, are making uh, are publishing um, Roke, and that looks like just looking at that mm -hmm. uh, it kind of gets me. But it 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 needs to be something special in an indie title to kind of wet my whistle, so to speak. So this one doesn't excite me as much, but it does kind of. It kind of gets my attention, not just because obviously we could talk about it on the scoop, but I have a switch and I'm not using it to its full potential. So if I do get something that that gives me the same sort of charm as a as a Roki or as a as a Limbo or something yeah. like that, then then particularly, I mean, not that they're all going to come out for Christmas, but if I can find something next summer where I don't know, maybe maybe I'm going on a plane holiday somewhere, just having something that I can just sit through and play. I, I find indie games good for that kind of thing. So doesn't immediately wet my whistle but then it also kind of then when I think about it, it piques my interest a little bit maybe maybe I'm going to watch a little bit of that and actually bring you guys closer so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it as a, as a person that again always at least if I've got that chance to play a game I will always play the game whether or not it be for an hour or two Media Molecule she's great <laughs> I play the game for an hour or two just to be able to say one I've played it and two I don't know whether or not I'm going to like it but Obviously, if I do, I'll see you through to the end, kind of thing. But a nice indie game. There's one. There's only one man in this office that loves indie games more than anybody, and that's Mr. Mark Bamber. That guy will. I say I play everything. That guy plays everything, and he plays a lot of shit. No, he, no, he he doesn't play good stuff. He only plays. He he's kind of like. Do you know Mark Bamber? He knows a lot about games, and he has got a lot of experience. But he's at that point where he's played so much stuff that he is ultimate hipster. He's like. He's <laughs> like. Think of think of a game that's amazing. The Last of Us, yeah, zombie stuff. Seen it, not asked. Mm. And it's like, do you know what his game of the year is? Uh, he, In fact, I could probably say the game of the decade. He did, he did tell me, and it, it's not Tetris, is it? Yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tetris Effect. Yeah, Tetris so, Effect is the game of the decade. <laughs> meat. I mean, I, I'm I'm sat here in a Last of Us shirt. I can shut my mouth. <laughs> so yeah. I could, opposite end of the spectrum. He's got no taste. Me, I wear one game. Yeah. Uh, Peggle. <laughs> It's close. <laughs> uh, jumping uh, back through the chat. Uh, it'll be pants. Uh, oh, so, okay. Uh, I actually won them playing Pez with Pez Rankings. Uh, the company that uh, run that was kind of great, don't you think? That's true. I remember that. Back in the day, we had... Um, it was, I, that's what I won my box copy. I won it? Uh, from Pez Rankings, yeah. I got the first four, I think it was, when I won a Pez tournament. We had... Um, 
was it Zavi? Yeah, it was Zavi, yeah. So, so uh, obviously, we are ice cream, um, and we are uh, our parent company is Jelly, which is why we're called ice cream, Jelly and ice cream. Uh, I mention that every time I say it, and I'm always going to mention it, just in case, because <laughs> a lot of people still don't get it. Bib, bib, just I, literally, I, oh. <laughs> no, it, it literally like uh, three or four months after actually streaming on the platform, so, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what his face looked like. Uh, so yeah, we we uh, do video game marketing events, esports, and, and so on, and we ran uh, Pez rankings, and um, uh, it was sponsored by Zavi, so we had lots of prizes and things. So we just rather than it just being like win a five pound PSN voucher mm. or Xbox Live stuff or, or whatever, which I mean that stuff is quite useful, but it gets quite monotonous and boring and doesn't allow you to be creative with your messaging and stuff. And we thought working with Zavi, we want to kind of give some of the bigger release stuff, uh, some some stuff that's a bit left field as well. So that's why we said like win a Saw Four box set kind yeah. of thing, uh, and and. Bibby won something. Yeah, Pez, yes. Pez 2010, that was when I was at my peak Pez powers. <laughs> uh, wait! Bibby won a Pez tournament? Uh, yeah. I know, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, 2010. Ten years ago, almost. Uh, I love Telltale. Uh, again, not sure if uh, they're classed as an indie dev, but they're dead now. Uh, yeah, it's just me. Yeah. At least I managed to finish the Telltale Walking Dead series off for people. I don't, I don't get... That's that's just it blew the load. Yeah, it's it's, it's it, got to be bad, bad resource management. It's like when you see things like Pizza Express going into administration. It's like it's because someone somewhere is just not fully doing the due diligence mm -hmm. on finance and stuff like that. Well, how many Telltale games was there? There was uh, Tale from the Borderlands, Game of Thrones, a Game of Thrones season one and two. Uh, they had Back to the Future one to uh, seasons one to three. They had uh, Walking Dead series one to three. What did they make four? Yeah, it was the third one. Uh, they had the Batman series one to two, so there's a lot of games going out in a very short amount of time, and I, I imagine, I don't think it was, he couldn't have been the same writer for all of them because the guy would just, he'd be in an early grave if nah, he was able to write it, all of that. It'll be a, a, a team of writers. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't play them all, so so was the games poor? Ooh, Guardians of the Galaxy were the games <clears> poor? Uh, no, I absolutely. Oh, Minecraft as well. Jesus Christ! I wonder more. if it was a case of the games were okay. In terms of, whilst they are really good, if if you want to, if you want a story, because that's essentially what they were telling tales. That, that, mm -hmm. that I think the, the, is that what the name is supposed to be? Is that the intention? Because because that's kind of what it is. They were they were telling stories as you played through it. Uh, the Wolf Among Us as well. Um, Mate, they've got loads. I've missed loads. Batman out. as well. Yeah. Uh, as Griff just says in the chat. So so the idea. Of that is you weren't playing an action game, you weren't playing a shooter, you weren't playing a uh, platformer. You were essentially playing an interactive story, which, as powerful as powerful of that as that is, a lot of people play games to play games. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people watch films or read a book if they want a story. So, I mean, completely just winging it in terms of my uh, uh, point here. It could be completely wrong, but could it be that they've just thought actually we'll 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 buy the rights to Guardians of the Galaxy we'll buy the rights to Batman we'll buy the rights to Jurassic Park we'll buy the rights to Back to the Future and all these IPs um, but then they just didn't get enough sell through because people were like ah oh, do you know what uh, oh there you go Game of Thrones season 2 cancelled yeah and uh, they added Stranger Things one planned out as well Wolf Among Us season 2 so the, the last 10 games for instance Walking Dead Walking Dead Batman Minecraft, Guardians of the Galaxy, Walking Dead, Batman, Walking Dead, yeah, it's Minecraft again. I, I assume, and I could be wrong, that yeah, they've they've invested in these expensive IPs, mm -hmm. hoping that the IPs would carry them through. Um, but then they've sold and they've been critically acclaimed, but CSI. they've not necessarily had the sell through that they needed to keep it uh, justifiable. And that, and my my close circle of friends uh, who don't have the same sort of like. Uh, affinity for the games industry as I do the more mainstream gamers they'll play what's what's big or what's cool or, or whatever I don't think any of them have played Telltale games maybe one um, I have yeah I meant like like mates back home kind oh, of thing. Okay. Um, maybe maybe mate Adam probably has but I don't think anyone else would have done <laughs> I was say, no I was actually talking about <laughs> mates <laughs> proper <laughs> not That's like what you going with that one <laughs> yeah so yeah. No, I mean like people that aren't like kind of live and breathe it yeah. work kind of thing people that, that play games to, to play games not, yeah. not well as a person that actually really really loves a single player campaign and a storyline they did very well with them. Uh, I've still yet to play the Batman one, uh, but the Walking Dead ones was phenomenal. Like season one and two, and then the Michonne series. I never got around to playing the season three. Tales from the Borderlands was brilliant. 
My see my that's the future was good. Another general impression I had them as well. Maybe Mitch maybe probably led to them not selling as much, if that was the case. Um was um it was kind of like we uh, working on Metal Gear were in the bubble of do you know what? this is a huge series, it's massive. People mm -hmm. love Metal Gear, some of the best stories, some of the best games ever that it's synonymous with the PS one and, and, and controller pot switching and oh my god but then other people uh, are going oh, it's, it's another Metal Gear and mm -hmm. I'm kind of so that that for me a lot of people love Gears of War not that I don't like it really like Gears of War I've only played the first two and I would play 3, 4 and 5 but I'm also seeing Gears 5 and I think oh it's just another Gears mm -hmm. of War so it's not it's, it's not what it is I mean a lot of Xbox people will probably uh, have that sort of impression mm -hmm. with a Metal Gear sorry for me uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put myself into those shoes as well like, I can see where you're coming from with that, but you start to build a fan base of the franchise itself. Like, we used, uh, again, ding, 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 Resident Evil alert, but when there's a new Resident Evil game coming out, I'm super excited. The industry seems to be getting that way again now after the sixth one bombed and they didn't bring one out for a while, then they brought out seven and it's kind of got back onto the hype train of Resident yeah, Evil again. The thing there, though, is that you've got a fan base of gamers that are excited for a game. Uh, that are in the world and the universe that you're bought into. Whereas if you create um, Batman, Telltale series, as I just mentioned, uh, the Batman uh, game is like, yeah, I'm into this. Mm. But then you might get the Arca players going, it's completely different, it's not what I'm into. So they might go, ah, okay, I'm, I'm going to drop out. But then you make the next game, mm -hmm. which is not Batman, it's Stranger Things, mm -hmm. and all, all the Batman guys are going, ah, I'm not, I'm not asked about kids on bikes and stuff. It's essentially what I thought about the Game of Thrones one because I'm not invested in Game of Thrones in any way, shape, or form. I'm probably one of the uh, one of the very small one percent that I've seen very few episodes, if any, of the Game of Thrones series. So playing the playing that Telltale one didn't interest me whatsoever. I played the first episode of it because it was free, um, but the rest of them that I've played, I've actually really enjoyed. But again, it comes down to the writing and the way that the that the first season of The Walking Dead, I don't care what anyone says, that was one of the most emotional games that I've ever played in my life. The way that everything plays out and then leads into season two is incredible. I only played a, the first episode, I think, mm. of that. Uh, well, the, the, the writing for that season one is amazing. Uh, probably one of the best written stories for any video game ever. Um, but like I said, the amount of games that they brought out in such a small amount of time, in seven years, they ended up bringing out nearly... Tw 12 to 14 games yeah. that's a lot of writing and a lot of and resources I think uh, as someone that, that wasn't necessarily for or against Telltale games like I said I've, I've played bits of some I've not played full a full series of anything I think it was probably uh, I mean it probably I mean it could have been I'm not saying it was definitely or mm. probably it could have been a case of there were so many games from so many different areas and genres and then the episodic sort of rollout. Yeah. I still don't know how that kind of works. So did they do one episode and then release the rest? Did you buy the full yeah. thing or did you buy them episodic? So I, play, I played the first series as a full bundle. However, I'm sure they got released via episode at the time. I think I must have turned up to it late to play the first season, but I remember waiting for the second season and the third season... I think they brought out the first episode and then they went under so they couldn't finish season three and then eventually they came in and ended up finishing it to, fi to finish Clementine's story. But um, yeah, it's like Final Fantasy is coming out. Episode one's meant to be coming out next year and when's the rest of them going to be? It's about like a four-year rollout period. Yeah, this Final Fantasy seven. what's the point in that? Is it, I think fatigue will play a big part of that and you, you see it, I mean, let's go, change tack completely. Uh, do you remember the, the tsunami, the Boxing Day tsunami about... 10, 11 years ago. Uh, it was like the Indonesian tsunami and it, it like huge devastation and the, the public got together and raised like mm. hundreds of thousands or millions of pounds within days because yeah. it was like, it was Christmas and everyone wanted to support people and then there was like, there was like two or three uh, disasters in quick succession and then people would, it was literally got to a point where people were like, oh, I'm not donating to another fucking another disaster mm. but that's the point because people have become so numb to it there was i remember reading uh i was funny enough i was doing psychological studies back then. <laughs> uh, and i remember doing uh, reading into uh fatigue and that was like disaster fatigue or a compassion fatigue people had got tired i've done it i've been there i've done it and mm. maybe maybe there was a bit of that because there was so many episodes say, say if there was uh, uh walking dead season one two three with six episodes each coming out one by one by one plus the batman games one by one by one plus back to the future one mm. two and plus game of thrones it's, yeah, it's probably just a case of that people have just got fatigued, despite yeah. the fact that compassion fatigue shouldn't really be a thing. Because you, what, 
I'm 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 tired of being a loving, helpful yeah. person. No, nobody wants to be that. Nobody chooses to be that. But but fatigue works in. in Odd ways. And anyway, mm. Nintendo Indie World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's so, so, we do this all the time. Like it's, we've it, got so many stories that we need to rattle through, and then we just go. Woo! It's good though. It's nice. It's nice that we can take you on a journey. Um, it's not manufactured. Uh, Batman. Uh, I used to play Sam and Max back in the day. Uh, Batman Telltale series was ace. They went to an unexpected place with the story, but it works. Sad it ended, to be honest. And many tears were shed during the first season of The Walking Dead. Brackets, manly tears. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, but yes, moving on, moving on. Um, we hope you enjoyed that conversation that was nothing really to do with Nintendo <laughs> Indie World, by the way. Uh, but let's jump into our next article, which, which Bibi has this one. Let's go with that one. Okay. Uh, so cool, this, cool, 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 cool. Uh, written by Richard Wakeling for GameSpot. Uh, this one. Yes. Uh, do, do. Uh, so Fallout 76 update 16 hits December 10th, featuring solo play, festive challenges, and a free trial. It's a festive nuclear winter in the latest Fallout 76 patch, says the tagline. And reminder, GameSpot uh, article written by Richard Wakelin. He says, Update 16 is set to arrive for Fallout 76 on Tuesday, December 10th. That's today, one week after my birthday, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, right in time for the holidays, the latest patch will add more choice to nuclear winter maps, introduce a, a true solo mode for private worlds, and feature new festive-themed events. Additionally... For those who have not yet picked up the game, a free trial uh, will be available to let you check it out and see what sort of shape the game is in now. Here's what to look forward to next week. Uh, In Fallout 76 Battle Royale mode, Nuclear Winter, the forest map is returning alongside Morgantown with players given the option to vote for which map they want to play before the start of every match. This has been a highly requested feature ever since the launch of Morgantown. Another requested feature has been the option to play Fallout 76 solo using its private worlds update 16 is adding two options to its private servers team only and all friends uh, the former lets you join a private server with those you've already formed a team with or alternatively you can join one alone uh, all friends works just like private worlds do now allowing anyone on your friends list to hop into the server you're playing on with the holiday season upon us fallout 76 also get into the spirit uh, with a holiday scorched event that runs from december 12th to december 26th during this period scorched enemies will appear in the game dressed in festive attire spot them or hear their jingle bells and you'll be able to hunt them down each one you kill will dr- uh, will drop a holiday gift for you to unwrap including low medium or high quality items that range from a lump of coal to rare plans and recipes uh, for a limited time, after update 16 releases, you'll be able to claim a free Santatron bot from the Atomic Shop. Build it in your camp, and then Santatron uh, will roam nearby, collecting treats like candies and toys and coal. During the holiday scorch event, it will occasionally give you a holiday gift. Uh, stuff. Um, do, do I... Oh, come on, I'm so close. No, read the bottom one. Uh, if all of this sounds appealing, Fallout 76 will also have a free trial weekend from December 12th to December 16th on PC, PS4, and Xbox One, so you can try it out for yourself. There will also be a double XP event active during the same weekend. That is exactly why I've included this article. Uh, for the free trial? You know, it's funny, that because as I was reading through it, that, for me, was the biggest uh, part about it. Mm-hmm. Um, let's, let's bring you in close. Hi, hi, welcome back. Uh, yeah, I mean... There's a, there's, a, there's a few bits that I can uh, that I can unpack within there. So private worlds are now actually private mm-hmm. potentially. Wow, that's amazing. So private, but if your friends can jo- if your friends can still join, you don't have to have an invite. Yeah, well, there's, there's two. I mean, that that was the thing. Private worlds were never really private. Mm-hmm. People could just jump onto your server and go, "Hi!" It's yeah. like my dog shit walking into your living room and and Bibby's just sat there in his underpants on the couch, feet up, like standard. Right. I mean, I mean that that we call that Wednesday. But, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that can happen now. Private worlds with the um, uh, what was the phrasing that, that a true solo mode? Uh, so a team only and all friends. So team only, you can make it so that you can join a server with a team of your choice and that team could just be you so you can go in uh, and actually play uh, Private Worlds or you can go as all friends which is what Private Worlds is now mm. how can you call something Private Worlds if there was no privacy what is that about <laughs> I mean level of privacy is have you met this person once okay now they are, have access to all <laughs> of your things enjoy the privacy so yeah that is nice and it's 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 nice little quality of life upgrade which I'm, I'm happy to see I mean still think I mean Rich coming from me who's never played Fallout uh, and probably uh, won't play Fallout 76 until it gets like the full experience because I don't want to. Ju- I don't want my first experience of Fallout to be a game that people that love Fallout play say is, Vegas, is, is, is is atrocious. Well, I think you said that a few times. Um, so I'm not going to play Fallout 76, and I won't think about playing Fallout 76 until it gets the NPC stuff next year. Uh, 
But seeing them roll out Private Worlds, which is a subscription service on top of a game that isn't up to par, uh, and then having that come out with no privacy mm -hmm. in Private Worlds, it just seemed calamity, calamity, calamity. But the fact that they're adding the quality of life stuff for those people that are involved and are invested, mm -hmm. then that, that that is a good up, up, uh, upgrade. But taking that point or saying there where I'm not going to play it. I mean, what I mean is, let me rephrase that, I'm not going to buy it mm -hmm. until I know it's fixed. But adding in uh, a couple of weeks where I can, or, or is it a week? From 12 to 16, so a week where I can go in and go, actually, let me, let me give it a go. That That is a good move. Uh, particularly if the game is at a point where people might play it on day one and trade it in. Um, if it's moved on to a point where it's actually something to shout about, then, yeah, that, that free... <clears throat> trial is, pr is pretty tasty plus double XP yeah well I'm going to put my free game where my mouth is and I'm going to play this I'm going to install it on Thursday because some Mrs Bibby is going out on Friday so I've got all evening to be able to play this game so I'm actually going to as a Fallout fan now I've got the opportunity to play for free I'm going to go in and put, try and play this game I'm going to see what it's like for myself Alistair from the Ice Cream Uploads team he really didn't like this game he is a Fallout fan however he reached level cap but he still wanted to continue playing it so it got to a point where they patched the game and put a load of new stuff in so he can carry on his grind but he's at max level now with all his nice little gear if he logs in and still got it all um, but yeah I'm going, to, I'm going to try this game this weekend and we've talked a lot of shit about it as a Fallout fan, I, I think it's it sounds horrendous, but... So are you streaming this live on Ice Cream Uploads? On Friday, yes. Yes! I need to find out how big this game is, though, because I've got it's a feeling it's, it's going to be a it's whopper. It's probably about that big, and yeah. <laughs> usually games are, because if not, it wouldn't fit in the console, silly. Um, yes, okay, well, that'd, that'd be good to go. If you guys are planning on using the, um, the free... Uh, uh, free what do they call it a pass access what do they call it a trial uh like a free, free trial, trial. There yeah, we go. Free trial. so if you guys are planning to use the free trial please let us know uh, when, when is the 12th is that thursday uh yeah thursday thursday to the 16th which is thursday to monday so you got all you got a big chunk of the weekend there. long weekend yeah uh five day weekend mm. okay nice 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 so a nice, nice little positive thing for fallout 76 for once but yeah if they're giving me the opportunity to play it for free i don't want to spend any money on this shit um, but we'll see. <laughs> well, that's one way to, to get over from the uh, Twitch part hangover. Just sit there and, and play a game that they make you frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, Jess says, I was thinking too now, baby. There you go. Uh, people who actually enjoy these games say, Fallout New Vegas, just play that game. You want to get involved in it. That's the game. I've got it on 360. You can borrow it, mate. Do you know what I mean? Uh, is it backwards compatible? Or mate? It most what? certainly is, mate. Oh, okay, there we go. I might give it a go. I might give it a go. Uh, which one are we jumping into next? There we go. Oh, do you like this one? Yes. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, new bit of hardware uh, I, with a new advancement. So Oculus Rift, you might have tried it. There's the Oculus Quest. So Oculus Rift is essentially a headset uh, with um, little sort of uh, uh, controllers. I don't know. How do you, how do you <laughs> reference them? Are they actually called controllers? Yeah, controllers, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we were Beat Saber in a couple of weekends back. Well, well, not last week. You was. Week, but yeah, I was Beat Saber and you were just beating. <laughs> yeah, was, uh, we're not going to say what I was beating. But. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Oculus Quest is essentially that, but trying to reduce the wires and stuff. And Praise it was Lord. promised to have like tracking technology so that you can see the hands and stuff without having to hold on to these controller things. And that's what this focuses on. Written by Matt Wales for Eurogamer, it says, Oculus Quest getting hand tracking early. It's now due next week. It was originally expected next year. So this is the article. Oculus Quest's previously announced controller-free hand tracking will arrive a little sooner than expected. It's now due for release later this week rather than the start of next year. First unveiled back in September, Oculus Quest's native hand and finger tra uh, tracking enables users to directly manipulate objects in a 3D environment with their hands without the need for a controller. It works using the Quest's built-in monochrome cameras. No external sensors required and all being well, has the potential to be a massive advancement for VR. However, expectations should be kept in check for the feature's rather limited debut. When uh, this week's Quest version 12 software update arrives, it will be possible to use hand tracking to navigate and interact with Quest's home interfaces such as library and store, plus a selection of first-party apps including the Oculus browser and Oculus TV. You can even set your floor height uh, for a stationary guardian boundary, what, what, I can't read this. You can even set your floor height for a stationary guardian boundary using your hands. Explains Facebook in its announcement in its announcement post. No controller necessary. New features 
Functionality and improvements are promised as development continues in tw into 2020. Additionally, the Quest's new SDK will begin rolling out next week, giving developers and creators the tools needed to implement control of free hand tracking in their apps. Users eager to try out hand tracking in its early form simply need to enable it in the Quest's experimental features menu when the version 12 software has been downloaded and installed. I'm gonna hit play on the video. Uh, yeah. See that those are the controls, those round things that you just mm -hmm. just. Oh, I'm looking at my screen, not your screen. Uh, so those those uh, little controls, those are what you would use if you use an Oculus Rift. Whereas obviously she's using Oculus Quest. You can see the little laser beams. Can see where her hand is. Wow, that's amazing. Um, see, I, I I much prefer to use the controllers. I think as cool as it would be using your fingers and stuff like that, I just don't think the technology is there for you to be able to do it flawlessly. Yeah, I I, I mean. That said, um, I mean, it's still using controllers, but seeing how how good the controllers were just on a PlayStation Move, um, uh, or, or other controllers were on mm. um, Beat Saber last week, seeing how good that was, and I, I thought it was just a one button click, 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 mm. seeing how, how good and how um, intuitive that stuff was, I'm open-minded. I do feel it could be, uh, like they've said there, uh, Expectations should be kept in check. Mm -hmm. I definitely think that that is something that we need to keep in mind. Obviously, they're showing you a, a PR video there where hands are going whoop, whoop, yeah. whoop. In reality, what's probably going to happen is you're wanting to go grab the cup. In reality, you're probably going to be like, burp, 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 Yeah, it's just going to turn it. <laughs> We've seen it all with it. I mean, I don't know why I'm bringing up the Kinect in this because it's a million miles apart technology wise, but got burnt once with that i love the i love the oculus i love the playstation vr i just think the motion tracking with your hands just isn't going to be there it's going to ruin the experience as it stands this oculus rift is only 360 quid which i think is super cheap for quest. the quest for the quest yeah yeah so i mean there's some of the let me just see if i can bring that video up again because you were scrolling through stuff so you can kind of see the games that they've got on offer what? whether or not they're going to be high profile first party triple a games so let's get rid of that my concern uh, comes from if we're playing Beat Saber mm -hmm. uh, using Oculus Rift and the uh, hand controllers as we were, I'm squatting down underneath that platform. If you've not played Beat Saber, you basically you stood there with two lightsabers and you've got blocks coming towards you. I've got a red lightsaber and a blue one. Red lightsabers chop blo red blocks, blue ones chop blue blocks. Da -da. But then occasionally you'll get like a, a wall comes, so you have to step sideways and let it pass. Mm -hmm. On the other side, then you get a ceiling comes and you've got to duck underneath it. Which that's all fine, but I know that when I was ducking down, I'm like that, and I've got my lightsabers. Like next to me, I almost look like I'm double fisted kind of thing. <laughs> uh, but, but if I've got my head down and my hands are off to the side, are my trackers going to lose my hands? Mm -hmm. Suddenly, I mean, if, I, if, I, if I'm then suddenly trying to like lightsaber a block up there, somebody clip that, please. Me just go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, if I'm if I'm doing that, I'll, am I going to lose it because I'm not looking at my hands? So yeah, I do definitely think keeping expectations in check is is good uh, and, and something that we should do. We're probably looking more to the point. I'd imagine. Having gloves is probably where you, yeah. where, you, where the technology will be more reliable. If not, you can't have 360 sensors without standing in a sensor booth, and nobody's going to want to set up like a tent that they stand in to do uh, sensory stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean it's good. It, it is nice, but I think, like you say, the, the limitations for it uh, will probably. Be apparent. What is vid? Oh, is this? Oh. this is the yeah. I had a look at see what games have actually I'll got. Bring, yeah, bring this bad boy up. Eleven. Oh, boom. yeah. <laughs> right, let me just let me put a bit of sound on. I don't so, know whether or not you're gonna wear it. So we're looking at uh, games that are available on uh, Oculus, and this is Vader Immortal, uh, no, sorry. which I hadn't seen until about a week. Ago or oh, two weeks ago when we was uh, oh, we how cool this is sick yeah I mean flawed though because if you've got stormtroopers shooting at it you don't need to block they are not going to hit you I've seen Star Wars it doesn't happen that looks sick just imagine that though so they're in the living room although I I must admit you don't need controllers and uh. I know that if I'm playing Beat Saber or if I'm holding a lightsaber, I want one of those in my hand. Mm -hmm. I want the feeling of having that there because the good thing with those is they have that vibration technology. So if you're playing Beat Saber, uh, if you've ever seen Star Wars and you watch two lightsabers go together, they like... Yeah. Um, 
when you're playing Beat Saber, those little controllers have vibration technology. So if you cross the streams, they go and you get that. Whereas if you just stood there wafting your hand about, uh, you're not going to get any of that feedback. So I think it, that is probably useful for menus and, and things like that. But when you want that tactile feeling, you want that feedback, the haptic feedback, then you kind of need that. This is the hand. game that I really, 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 really Arizona want to Sunshine. play. You should, yeah. you should mention this on the stream, Bib. I don't think you've ever mentioned Arizona Sunshine. No, it, it looks sick. That, how does that not look cool? Yeah, imagine two-player on but that. You, there's a guy who does a YouTube series, and he's got his mate playing, so there's two of them playing. So you, like, you can throw magazine clips at each other, and it sticks oh, to you your body. Ah, yeah. yeah. oh, badass. Okay, well, now we need to invest in a couple of... Uh... <laughs> But yeah, it's a, a fully fledged storyline, so you can go into buildings and you can loot the buildings for weapons and new clips and stuff like that. See, see, when you, when you've got stuff like that, I'm not a big fan of like horde modes. Uh, so, say we were playing zombie mode in Black Ops. Mm -hmm. Don't force me. After I've, I've, after you've got to the third or fourth wave, my brain's like, okay, well, you kill all these, and they're going to come faster, and there's going to be more of them, and they're going to be stronger. But you can get slightly better weapons, and and it's about the. Uh, keeping the right balance of levelling up your loot enough to take out the zombies and, and, and I just think oh, it's just tedious I know it's the same thing I know what it's going to be over and over again whereas if you're two people and you're in that mm -hmm. sort of like and you're like okay this is like I'm actually in somewhere now yeah. it's like I'd be, I'd be quite on board with that but anyway let's not waffle for too long because we've been live for quite a long time we've got two more stories to get through as well before yeah. Joseph starts streaming today oh yes that's a good point so uh, jumping on to our next bit of news from one this thing one, new yeah. to something else. Uh, this is written by Game Central, that famous person at Metro. Nice to see <laughs> them back in the driving seat. Uh, and it says, new Bioshock game announced by 2K from new studio Cloud Chamber. 2K has finally announced a new Bioshock game, but it's going to be in de uh, development for the next several years. It's been six long years since Bioshock Infinite, but now publisher 2K has finally confirmed that a new game is underway by a new studio set up specifically for the purpose. They've said essentially nothing about the new game itself, though, other than it will be in development for the next several years. So don't expect it anytime soon, but do expect it to be next-gen only. Instead, all the attention at the moment is on Cloud Chamber, which is actually two separate studios, one based in the San, Fran uh, San Francisco Bay Area and the other in Montreal, Canada. Although many of the Cloud Chamber developers are said to be veterans of previous Bioshock games, there's no mention of series creator Ken Levine, who is still working at 2K Studio Ghost Story Games, but hasn't produced any new games while there. Instead, Cloud Chamber were headed up by 22-year industry vet uh, veteran Kelly Gilmore, 2K's first female studio lead, who most recently worked on Firaxis Games on titles such as Civilization and XCOM. As we continue growing our product portfolio, we remain inspired opportunities to invest further in our valuable IP, great people, and their collective long-term potential, said 2K president David Ismailer. Uh, Bioshock is one of the most beloved, critically praised, and highest rated franchises of the last console generation. We can't wait to see where its powerful narrative and iconic first-person shooter gameplay ahead in the future with our new studio team at Cloud Chamber leading the charge. So far, there's not been much as a bit of concept art for the new game yet, and everything suggests it won't be seen in public for a long while yet. However, there's an outside chance you may get some sort of teaser at the Game Awards on Friday. So, new Bioshock. Mm-hmm. I played the first two. I never played Infinite, despite having it. So I've got all three of them in my collection at home. Never played Infinite. So I don't know whether or not it was the conclusion of the story. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, we need more Bioshock. I don't actually think there was a Bioshock that came out on this console generation. Oh, no, they missed the gen. Yeah. Um, it was... Uh, Bioshock Infinite was 360, and then that mm -hmm. was the last... That's what got on, yeah. Um, they brought out the collection on the PlayStation 4 and... Uh, Xbox One and on PC, obviously. Um, but yeah, I never got around to actually playing the uh, playing the last one, so uh, we'll see. Interesting. Uh, Anyone in the chat that has played them? I, mean, uh, I know Jess is a fan. Yeah, and Luke as well. Although I don't, I don't think I've seen him in the chat. He's uh, another one. I think even Luke yesterday was talking about the fact that he's got a Bioshock display at home, so he, that must make him a mega fan. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah so. It'd be interesting to hear some thoughts on what people think. Because I know Bioshock was loved, Bioshock 2 mm -hmm. not as much, and Bioshock Infinite was divisive um, in terms of some people loved it, some people didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but all in terms of mechanically uh, were renowned. So whilst Bioshock 2 wasn't as much loved, it was it was down to, I think, that Ken Levine dude... Um, 
I remember seeing stuff on that. I can't remember. I can't remember it though. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, but I, as far as I remember, it was it was it was a solid game. It just wasn't as good as the yeah. first one. Uh, and Infinite was good if if you liked it, and it wasn't if you didn't. Um, although uh, I don't know because I've not played any of them. So yes, let us know. Voting day. Thursday is voting day. Thursday, twelfth December, voting day. Uh, why? Why are we saying this? <laughs> Don't forget to vote on Thursday, twelfth December. Uh, are you voting? Yes. Do you know who you're voting for? Not telling anyone. I know who I'm voting for. Although I think it's pretty obvious from my uh, post. I don't tend to go too political, but I will be voting Labour. You vote whoever you want, uh, as long as it's Labour. If not, get the fuck out of my chat. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Joking. Uh, get on Outer Worlds. Uh, says next generation yeah. in the chat. Anyway, do you know what? Actually, let's let's leave that. There is a new Bioshock game. Yes, it is big. Yes, uh, Cloud Chamber being a new studio formed by 2K is big news. Um, but we'll we'll just scroll straight past that just because we're uh, we've been on for a while and we don't want to leave. You guys, you know, sat in your car for three hours thinking, do you know what? This is <laughs> yes, going on for a while today. today. So, yeah, we'll probably talk about that more as things uh, uh, come out. Cloud Chamber, that is undoubtedly big news, but at this point in time, we've got nothing. All we know is that there's a, there's a game in development from a new studio with, with a couple of officers and they're hiring for people. So, that's kind of all we really know. But let's move forward. Uh, uh, next article, once again written by Game Central for Metro. It says PS5 DualShock controller can make all single-player games multiplayer. Interesting. Uh, so that's a non-official render of what the DualShock 5 might look like. Uh, although that's interesting because that non-official render takes the DS4 mixed with like the DS5 styling plus that almost weird thing that thing we seen that, yesterday yes, yeah. and puts it into where the touchpad is. Anyway. The PS5's controller may have a secret extra function allowing multiple people to connect uh, to control the same single-player game. A new patent for the PS4's DualShock 5 controller describes a previously unsuspected ability, the option for multiple people to play the same single-player game. Uh, as in, it sounds like remote play together for Steam. Mm. Anyway, uh, a new patent for the PlayStation 4 said that way. The, the split controller gameplay allows for up to four people to play the same game or character by splitting up the control so that one person is using the analog sticks, one the face buttons, <laughs> and so on. Imagine that. Calling it now, uh, if Fortnite still exists, it'll be doing the uh, the Fortnite split player challenge. Uh, that's, it's going to be a thing. This is dumb. Although we technically did that. Uh, Jacob and Connor who, uh, Connor, who used to be part of the ice cream team, did that on their very first... Uh, uh, it was an interview period actually when they when they were uh, involved in ice cream they were playing one of them was doing the control sticks and um, one of them was doing shooting or something like that I can't quite remember. anyway that doesn't seem the most practical idea in the world especially uh, as the illustration in the paint is for a one on one fire but it no could uh, it, but it could no doubt make for some fun party games it is a weirdly specific feature but it seems to be a combination of Sony's PlayLink, which allows multiple people to play uh, PlayStation games with their phone as a controller and SharePlay, which allows others to take over your game remotely. Neither option has been particularly popular, but narrative-based games like Until Dawn have certainly proven successful by having people argue, argue over which decisions should be made. What's being suggested by the patent seems a lot more involved than that, but whether it's meant for serious games or just party games, we'll have to see when the first titles are released. But potentially, it could be an option to make any single-player game multiplayer. If you say, uh, sit and play in it with someone uh, else on the same couch or online. Uh, an alternative use for the same tech is for control to be constantly switched between each player. Something like Man of Medan by the same developers un until dawn. But again, that seems a bit gimmicky. Of course, just because there's a patent for something, uh, a patent, a patent for something, or a patent, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean a company will necessarily use it, and there's no guarantee any of this will come to anything. Uh, none of it seems to require any special hardware, but then previous patents for the DualShock 5 suggest it's not too different from the current model, with uh, just with better force feedback and an inbuilt microphone. And glory be, no light bar. The render by Let's Go. Uh, the render by Let's Go Digital at the top of the page suggests the touchpad will be turned into a tiny touchscreen device. But so far, there's no confirmation of that happening apart from anything. Uh, it seems very expensive, drastically uh, decreasing the choice of anyone having multiplayer controllers in the first place. So, yeah. Best part about this article is they were saying, no light bar, yay. But they've got to have a touchscreen that's going to take more battery from the remote, the, the remote than a, a light bar ever would do. So yeah. we'll see where that goes. But this is dumb. I mean, Again, is this this patent stuff is just so dumb. It's 
I, I can understand it. There's, there's, a, there's a huge desire for people to want more, but it's when you get things like Let's Go Digital, it almost, we've seen it already. I mean, we're talking about Kojima. One person reports on one thing, somebody reports on something, and suddenly Kojima has now been employed by Konami. <laughs> uh, and it's like, what? What? Kojima sat there like eating, I don't know, something that he's got just about to go out mm -hmm. on Instagram, uh, going, nah, mate. Uh, but Let's Go Digital, um, they make a render of this. Somebody takes that away from its original source and just shares the image on a tweet, and then that's it. Suddenly, 50 yeah. people are thinking, wow, we've got first confirmed images. I mean, you mentioned it with your brother or something, saying that he'd seen the PS5 uh, and it, it looks dodgy, and it's like, no, mate, that's just a dev that's kit. That's a dev kit, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's not even a dev kit. That's a mock-up uh, based off of patents. Uh, it's not even an official dev kit. It's just mock-ups off of mm -hmm. ideas of the way I turn this information subjectively into a, a finished article. So, yeah, I mean, having a touch screen a long way to and go. stuff like that, I suppose it could be useful. I, I like the idea of the more opportunities and the more abilities and things can do, all for that. But at the same time, I can see it just being a bit of a waste of time because the touchpad hardly really use. I use it as a, it's another button. Yeah, uh, it's just a big massive button that I always hit. Usually um, used for the map. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Map button. <laughs> uh, so I like the fact it's there. A screen there. Imagine you're playing a game and and like when you're playing GTA, the, the light bar goes red and blue, red and blue, red and blue. Imagine that red and blue. You're like, ar, 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 yeah. get away! Especially if you're playing in a dark room and this little torch in your hands flashing in your face like. Oh. Oh, many 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 years ago. I'm going to use two examples here, one of which uh, there'd be absolutely no surprise, but when you used to play Resident Evil on the Dreamcast, <laughs> you remember the little memory unit that used to slide in? That used to tell you how many bullets you had left on your health. So if you're playing like that on the the res, uh, on the PS5 and it does have a little touch screen, it may again show you how many bullets you've got left in your gun. So it just removes all the HUD from the screen then, which is nice. Just clean the, the screen up and then just have it on a little small screen in front of you. That'd be cool. Because the HUDs on games really annoy me, but some games you do need them it, on. I don't, see, my issue with it is it sounds like a good concept, but I just don't like it as much as I think I'm going to do. So uh, Microsoft had something, got, I don't know if they still have it there, called Microsoft Glass or Project Glass. Um, uh, not to be confused with Google Glass. Um, and it was basically, you're playing on the Xbox, you can use your iPad as a second screen. Mm -hmm. And speaking about Kojima, Grand uh, Ground, Fifth, uh, Ground Zeroes and the Phantom Pain use that so yeah. that when you pause the game you can see your map and set your, your waypoints and stuff mm -hmm. you can just have your iPad next to you so you can look down at it yeah. um, but it just it was whilst it was it was kind of good in the fact that you got a double screen experience it also disconnected you you lost the immersion you kind of then like oh, I just want to see where I'm going looking Mm. And, I, and in the end, I just it was too much of an effort. Yeah, to Fall, get... Fallout 4 did that as well, but you, you could do it on your phone, so you'd buy the clip for your controller, so your map would just always be there, your inventory and things like that. So, so we'll see. It, it's, it's, it is it's silly season for stuff like this, especially when we know we've got a console coming out next year. People can just write whatever they want, and people are going to lap it up. We should we should start making our own Dodge stuff. Next year, the Renegade, you, I can see you in the chat. Uh, make some shit. You need to make some some dodgy uh, stuff, and like we'll we'll just throw out some stupid articles. That we, we'll have a test, and because we're talking about how how people legitimize something, which then gets legitimized mm -hmm. by something else. We should post something somewhere on Reddit. You post it, and then I'll share your post or whatever. Uh, yeah, share mm -hmm. it to the Ice Cream Lords website because that's where we're going to put the article yeah. with all the images. Yeah, and then and then we'll see how far we can make our bullshit stuff. Because <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Anyway, speaking about bullshit. Uh, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to end the show. I know it's bullshit. I know you guys want us to stay here, but we've got to get out of here, mainly because I need a wee. I actually do. And we've got Fun someone fact. streaming in 15... 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Yes. So, yes, that is the end of the scoop for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being with us. Talking through everything from... Uh, Bedrock to State of Play to Indie World to Kojima slash Konami slash Controllers slash all of the slashes and I need a slash and I yeah. keep saying slash. Stop saying slash! <laughs> anyway, <Jack show. laughs> in 22 minutes, about 21-ish now, Josie will be live on Ice Cream Uploads at twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream Uploads. I assume she's playing through Death Stranding, mm -hmm. although I haven't done my research today, so I'm just going to go with that because Bibby nodded and said the noise. Yes. Thing. So yes, more yes, Death Stranding. All the games. <laughs> uh, but that is up it for the scoop. We will be back at 10 a.m tomorrow with more of your daily fix of games industry news if you want anything to be included how, how, how can people do that babe uh, you can go through twitter and you can find either this good looking lad this great looking lad 
or the Ice Cream Uploads account. Uh, just tag us in. You can see our stuff at the bottom of there or just look for Ice Cream Uploads uh, for those of you that listen on audio services. This is at Graham underscore Day for Mr. Graham Day and yeah. at We've Got Wabinio for your boy. Um, so yeah, just tag us in on anything that you see on social media. We will pick it up and we will give you our opinions the very next day. Well, that is it for today, ladies and gentlemen. We are done. Josie will be in, in just about 20 minutes. Feel free to stick around. Obviously, if you are wanting to watch Josie's stream and you're new here and you haven't followed, do that because you will get the go live notification. So you don't even have to navigate there. You can just click the thing and it'll take you. So do it. Do it. Hit the follow button. If, if you have already, thank you very much. And until then, have yourselves a lovely day. We will be back for tomorrow for more scoop. And make sure you stay frosty.